welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Uh, it would be much worse to have a talk before lunch. And so let's talk about LibreOffice on KDE Plasma. This is my vanity slide. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, my nickname. Oh, Mike. My nickname is Bubli. I'm a LibreOffice developer, and I'm one of the people who brought LibreOffice on KDE Plasma to you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, like no way I did, or, or I would be able to do all of this alone. And all those guys and girls worked on the project as well. They contributed the code. They tested, reported, trashed bugs, and actually very little of what I'm going to talk about today would be possible without them. Unfortunately, I don't think any of them is here, but some of them have their co-workers around. I see you, Tobias. <laughs> so uh, let's give them some small round of applause <laughs> before we start. Thank you. Okay, LibreOffice on KDE Plasma. Uh, is there anybody in this room who doesn't know what LibreOffice is, never heard of? Everybody sort of knows? So yeah, just to, just to reiterate, it's the best free and open source office suit out there. I'm sorry Caligra and I'm sorry Apache OpenOffice, but that's just how it is. Uh, the Document Foundation is a non-profit entity. It's a bit like KDE Foundation, and it's the entity behind LibreOffice. Uh, I would also like to bring this the sister project of LibreOffice, which is a document liberation project. It is a set of import filters and reverse engineering tools to uh, import documents from various ancient binary proprietary formats and convert them to open formats. But it's a bit tangential to the rest of the talk. I just wanted you people to know that this project exists. Okay, I, I like telling stories, so this is a brief history of LibreOffice on one slide. It all started in 1984. Some of you have not been alive by that time yet. With a bro dude whose name was Marco Beris. He uh, created a word processor, a text processor for 8-bit computers. And in the course of time, he built the entire company around this word processor and later added the spreadsheet processor and the presentation tool. And the company's name was Star Division. And Star Division got acquired by Sun Microsystems in 1999. Allegedly, it was for Sun, it was cheaper to buy the entire company than to buy Microsoft Office licenses for everybody. But <laughs> I think it's just an urban legend. So as, as uh, Star Division got acquired by Sun, the project got renamed to OpenOffice and its, f its first version got released in 2002. And then the second version and the third version. And then in 19, uh, 2009, uh, Sun was acquired by Oracle. And two years later, what happened is that Oracle discontinued support for OpenOffice and laid off all the employees that were working on the open office. But even before this happened, uh, some smaller group of open office developers uh, decided to somehow do away with what they perceived as some sort of uh, authoritative, or let's say dictatorship of Oracle and decided to do things their own way. So they forked the project and named it LibreOffice. And two years after that, finally, the non-profit foundation supporting LibreOffice and its development got established. Uh, as you perhaps know, LibreOffice is a multi-platform software. What does it mean that it simply runs or is 
better or worse integrated into different operating systems. And which operating systems are those so officially supported by document and released by Document Foundation is Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. So if you had had to LibreOffice Org or Document Foundation Org, those binaries are the ones for those operating systems, are the ones that you can download from from the official page. Then there are of course like multiple Linux distribution that add a bit their own sugar coating or remove the stuff they don't like upstream. And this is what you what you can what what is shipped with your favorite Linux distribution probably. And then there is some smallest set of non-official meaning like not officially endorsed and supported by Document Foundation distributions mostly based on some Unix-like operating system like for example FreeBSD or Haiku. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, now I would like to move the focus to the Linux operating system. Uh, if it was like this, it would be, there would be just one front then to rule them all. Uh, that would be of course perfect, but Linux is all about choice, isn't it? So on Linux, you can actually pick up three different flavors of like how the front end looks like and how well is it integrated into the desktop. The first and the oldest one of them is the generic X11 front end. It's pretty ugly, it looks like Windows 95 and its desktop integration sucks a big deal. Then there is integration with GNOME desktop environment based on GTK. I actually thought that this GNOME frontend is a bit older than the KDE one, but I checked Git logs this morning and they are about the same age. So it started in 2004. Uh, it was started by Michael Mix, and in 2011 uh, it got ported to GTK3 and brought to perfection by Quail and McNamara. And about the same age, the KD or Qt, well it was not Qt based yet, uh, KDE frontend was born in the same company, it was SUSE, and the KDE3 based frontend was started by Jan Holeshovsky and five years later it was ported to KDE4. But it was actually, how to say that, so I had this talk once or twice and whenever I started to talk about like KDE4 was not really a KDE4 but it was just some wrapper around X11, people got pretty bored. So I'm not going to talk about that in detail but fast forward eight years later, in 2017, two years ago, two things happened. Uh, Million Wolf created a KD, um, KF Plasma File Picker. It was some, I will talk about it a bit later. So the front end, the user interface was still GTK3 based, but as a um, Plasma File Picker was run over this GTK3 frontend as a separate, separate binary. And later in 2017, first Qt 5 base proof of concept of the entirely new interface for the LibreOffice was created by Jan Marek Logowski. So as I said, uh, LibreOffice is a multi-platform software. So if you want to write LibreOffice code, does it mean that, well, it exists, like do you have to write the GTK code and at the same time a Windows API code and if you want to write for, if you want it to work on Mac, do you have to write Quartz code? Does the multi-platform code look like this? Well, sometimes it does, but not too often. Well, the answer is no and no. So we have some sort of interfaces. So on the on the left, there is some sort of like core library. 
which is like some core functionality, do something, for example, open a dialog and set its size or open a file picker and do it in such a way that only text files will be shown. So this is a generic functionality and it's some sort of contract between the core library and the front-end library. This will be the core will be implemented in some generic C++ code and the front-end in some, some platform specific code. So to open a dialog, we create a new queued dialog and then we resize it. To open a file picker, we create queued based file picker and then we set its filter. And similarly, if you want to copy text to clipboard, we can write some generic C++ code doing that in the core and then re-implement the same functionality in using the appropriate API of Qt library. So this is some kind of like once again, like more or less the same, some kind of diagram how, how it really works. I, I, I named this, this, this woman up there, Sally Instance, because, because the class actually implementing this is called Cell Instance. And if I'm talking about some platform dependent functionality, what exactly do I mean by that? So I divided this functionality into the two categories, basic and extended. Basic functionality, that's, yeah, well, just like the basic stuff. So create the windows, connect them to the window manager, make them look like native, so make LibreOffice look like any other KDE application. Uh, add some native menus to that. Add some, like, make file and folder pickers behave and look like any other folder pickers on KDE platform. And then comes the extended functionality. So, so everything, everything else beyond basics. So users want to copy paste text or images. They want to drag file from file manager to the to the office application. They want to just like I do right now. They want to present stuff on dual screen. And LibreOffice, just like for example Firefox has comes with some set of extensions. Uh, so those are some, some extra modules you can install on top that come with some extra functionality that is not in core and one of the most famous LibreOffice extensions is Volmux, which is some sort of advanced template manager. Yes, and when you present, you of course want to sometimes embed videos and animated GIFs and various media content into your slides. So yeah, that looks like quite a lot of work, right? So yeah, that was, I, I, I looked approximately like this when I realized how much work that's gonna be. But we can do it. And we did. Okay, how, how did we make this happen? So um, the first step, uh, the thing I did not want to talk about, KDE4, LibreOffice integration, the windows you saw on the screen were not the native windows, those were X11 windows. And the events that were being processed were not native Q events, but those were X11 events. So if we wanted to like the transition between KDE4 KDE 5, if we wanted to port this to Qt 5, it was not possible because Qt library put accessing all the X11 functionality directly to an end. So we had to, it was obsoleted in Qt 5 and we had to write it anew. So the very first step was to do away with X11 windows and replace those with native Q windows or Q widgets. And what do we need to do with those windows? Of course, like they need to be opened and closed. Uh, optionally also like with this kind of annoying nagging dialogue, if you want to close the window, oh, you have unsafe changes, don't forget to save them. Uh, it would be also nice to be able to maximize and minimize window and set their size. 
and also remember their size to be able to restore it later. And over the main window, we can open, we can open dialogues which can be modal, like for example, printing dialog, which means the window underneath is blocked as long as this dialog is open, or they can be modeless. For example, a spell checker, so while I, I check the, what's the current spelling gonna be, I can still interact with the underlying window. But not all windows are created equal. Uh, yes, like there are those trivial cases, the main window, the dialog, but there are also tool windows. I guess I will, I hope I will. So, for example, this is a tool window. some kind of dockable thing, so I want to be able to, to dock it and undock it. And similarly, I can... I can undock the toolbar. And I want to be able to dock it again. So, the next step, since we now have the windows are native, and that means that nice bonus of that is that they receive queue events. So, what we simply do is that we map those queue events that come our way to the LibreOffice events and process them the LibreOffice way. Uh, Yes, and then like those by events, I mean like keyboard presses and mouse clicks. But since not all events are user driven, we have also some additional events dispatcher for, for I don't know, like as you import the file, the progress bar moves, or the extensions come with their own set of events. And yes, so now we can open the windows, we can resize them do things with them, we can process the events, and it's time to put some content into the windows. So uh, the way this is done is that, as I said, this is a queue main window, it has a central widget, and there is one giant central widget, which is a custom widget, uh, and yes, and then we paint. We take queue painter and queue style option to style the widgets in the native way, and to create to create the queue images here, for example, we have an ex we have a, a button, and then we simply paste the bitmap onto the custom widget, and like it's like some sort of patchwork, uh, like we we compose the, the final bitmap in the window from from the queue images made of like all those individual widgets. And of course, like having native windows comes with some, some nice side effects. So uh, for example, we can now support the native menus. Uh, so, and the nice bonus of that is that we have the integration with the global menu for free. The only thing we need to do is to map LibreOffice menu structure to Qt menu structure. And also the native tooltips are now possible. Before it was sort of misery to resize and position the tooltip correctly. We don't have to do that anymore because the Qt will do it for us now. So here's some nice screenshot of a global menu. And while we are aware at improving the look and feel, we, for example, something that we're proud of, we improved the look and feel of this, of this notebook bar. This looks like Windows 95, and this is how the native tab bar looks like. I will, I will simply quickly, quickly jump through the because I don't have that much time left uh, over the file picker functionality. As I said, there was some initial work done by Million Wolf that was a separate binary that communicated with the core LibreOffice over over standard in and standard out. It was a bit of a hack, 
but it was pretty easy to to port it to the new code and yeah basically like the same principle some like generic codes where the programmer says open a file picker and some platform specific code that actually opens the file picker and does things with it things like there are some slight differences between when you open the file or whether you want to save into the file and then you have to retrieve the URL you want to save into or you want to open switch to folder set the filter like what kind of what type of files you want to see and also it would be nice to have some access to files on the remote shares and since there are some things that come only with LibreOffice like for example there's another thing I'm personally proud of because I worked on that you can encrypt and sign the file with GPG key so there's this nice checkbox up there where you can upon saving the file you can pick check the checkbox and it will get encrypted with your GPG key and for those with need those custom controls those checkboxes or list boxes and we want, want to be able to get and set their value okay so once this is done we can put our feet up and relax right unfortunately no only when we like when we, we got the code into this shape and then users started to report bugs and we discovered all those things that users do with their office suit so for example they copy and paste and they drag and drop and they use extensions and they create slideshows and <laughs> it was it was pretty overwhelming so yes like I, I don't know like I don't have that much time left like to, to, to go into much much detail but like we had to we had to implement copy and paste uh, this is again like the same generic scheme like there's some some interface the generic that like gets the content or says set puts the stuff into clipboard or reads from clipboard in a generic way in the core and here it is re-implemented re-implemented in in terms of cute api and what's also a bit interesting is this special case special sort of uh, selection clipboard on x11 so uh, it's not like control c control v but like putting the stuff that's selected that's highlighted by mouse up there into the clipboard and for that we needed to implement some sort of lazy handling or lazy loading which means which means not putting the data into clipboard immediately but only like put it there when it's available and when somebody else wants to read more or less the same with the with drag and drop like there's internal drag and drop within one application but also from outside from other text editor or from file manager and this was also quite interesting problem with the extensions <sighs> the extensions do all kinds of things they open their own dialogues they open another window they execute commands and they can even add their own user interface elements and unfortunately sometimes the extensions run in a different thread and this presents a little bit of a problem because everything happ that happens in the user interface in Qt has to be run in the main thread and if it isn't all kinds of weird things happen like crashes and deadlocks so so we somehow had to to trim this interface or to get it into shape that every single user interface access happens in the main thread yes and then there was like 10,000 paper cuts lots of rendering glitches uh, bad access to system fonts uh, users that don't type with the latin scripts like chinese japanese korean need support for input methods of course it would be nice to have the interface accessible and it is yes and um, at the end of the day there was the there was the slideshow i have to admit that impress 
was the thing we, we tested the least because what you usually do, you put some data into spreadsheet or you type some text in the text editor and you don't, don't present stuff on dual screen every day, right? So we didn't really test it this and we didn't really think about those corner cases. So if you, if you run the slideshow in LibreOffice Impress, you have like two windows on two different screens. Sometimes they are the same, sometimes they aren't because you have a special presenter console. Sometimes the slides can have some multimedia content, embedded videos, or as you have seen, those, those animated GIFs. So those are handled as embedded cute windows. And we also had to add some elementary support for OpenGL because sometimes the transitions between the slides can be implemented with OpenGL. So yeah, maybe you now think this is great. Can I try? Where, where can I get this nice stuff? It's all in LibreOffice Master, so you can build it yourself, of course, but you don't have to. You can, if you want latest and greatest, you can download the daily builds from LibreOffice Org, or you have it shipped with your Linux distribution. The first version that has this is LibreOffice 6.2, which is stable by now. It has been released in February this year, and every major Linux distribution adopted it. You just have to install an extra package, which is called KD integration. And of course, by Transitivity, LibreOffice 6.3 has it as well, has been released earlier this month. And I have to say, by now, this stuff is relatively bug free. So there are not many open bugs, and if there are some corner cases. And with this, I'm at the very end of my talk. Whoa. So if there are <laughs> any questions or comments or offers of beer or criticism, I'm all ears. Offer that beer. Uh, how is the network access stuff going to work? Are you working on KIO integration for LibreOffice or how is that? That's not very interesting. yet. But it's, it's planned like it doesn't work with KIO. We simply enable the URL startings with WebDAV or SMB or like those things. There is an integration with GIO, but KIO, that's a missing feature. Okay, thank you. It's planned. I think there was some GSOC project like announced for the next year. Like it's one of the possible GSOC projects to pick. More questions? Way back there. So this uh, Qt integration, could that also be used on non-Unix platforms? Uh, like Windows and Mac? Yeah. Yes, people tried to build it on Windows, and it, it compiles, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> certainly it's not in the state. It compiles, ship it. Other questions? Yes. Um, maybe you didn't even consider it, but uh, how about the Wayland support? Does it work? Uh, it should, but <laughs> <laughs> at the moment it doesn't. There is some crash uh, because of yes, yeah, some corner case, and it's 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 reported as a bug against one of the cute Wayland I don't know libraries. And I predict an app image question from over here. You just waved, didn't you? Yeah. Um, well, not app image, but uh, I was going to ask if there is any consideration to create a mobile version of LibreOffice, and if there is, if you are considering using Kirigami for it. App image. What? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. If you are considering making a mobile version. What version? A mobile version. A mobile version. Oh, yes, there's LibreOffice for Android. Right. And uh, that's some separate application. 
and there's even some integration for the for the iOS. But like I, I think I'm I'm not involved in this, but I think like the plan is more like if you if you want LibreOffice on mobile, there's LibreOffice online. Rather go that way, like somehow force this LibreOffice online onto the mobile platform because it's less work. Oh, okay. So my prediction was terrible, I guess. I think to answer the first question that came along, uh, as far as I understand, LibreOffice now uses the KDE file dialogues. Yes. And so such that at that point, uh, my project that I worked on, Carrier Fuse, it would be converted to a local URL. Yes, that would be, that would be and like really. And so that will kind of solve the KIO issue. I, we, we had problems with this, with uh, writing onto web TAV because LibreOffice is this kind of K unique application. Is that a thing? That's the correct word. Uh, so we had trouble with writing on web DAV, and we were looking into wa ways how to fix this problem. And I was particularly looking at this K, K, K I O fuse, but it, it was it was like two years ago, and it was in the pretty bad shape. It's better now. So, <laughs> woohoo! We got time for one more. If someone wants to ask a question, and otherwise, yeah. I will tell. I forgot to show. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> if there are no other questions, I'd like to thank Katrina again.